Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I want to show you how to make this cardigan with a collar with sleeves like that and with a bottom in buffalo plaid pattern. Okay, so these are quite light. As you can see, they have little holes, but I personally think that this is great for uh, spring, for a warmer spring. It will look really, really nice. Okay, so what we have? We have a big collar at the top, like this. So again, buffalo plate pattern. And then the sleeves are the same finishing as the collar. And of course, the bottom as well is matching. We have a few buttons here. Uh, this is double crochets and half double crochets chain one pattern, the main one, and then just the buffalo plate one. The back is like this. So we, I have a little bow. So you don't have to do the bow if you don't want to, but I think it's a nice little um, detail for the back. Okay, so let's talk about the sizes. So I have the size chart from one years old up to five, six years is the biggest one. Uh, I have to say the smaller ones look a little bit cuter than the bigger ones, but it is possible to do. And I will show you the big one that I have and there's a few things that uh, I'm going to say about it, okay? So this is a size uh, one to one and a half years. You can see I had it in white and the classic colors for the buffalo plate. Now the next one that I have right here is for two to three years in color gray and exactly the same, everything exactly the same. And the very last one, so this is the big one that I have. This is for five to six years and I have used different colors. I have these metal buttons in here and the sleeves and the bottom. Now what can I say about the big size? Uh, one thing that I would change if I would be making this again is that I would do more rows at the bottom of the buffalo plate. Okay, so I would start it a little bit earlier and I would have two extra rows of um, little squares. Okay, it just seems to have a little bit too much of the main color. That is just my uh, personal thought. Like I said, it can be made in all sizes. You can make it like this. You can have more squares right here. I will tell about this when the time comes. But for now, if you are interested in making this cardigan with me, let's go and have a look of what we are going to need. And of course, the colors are up to you. There's so many um, different colors that you can choose. Uh, I just prefer white or gray, but it can be really nice and pink and maybe a buffalo plate or some other colors. Okay, if you're interested, let's go and have a look of what we're going to need for this cardigan. To make this cardigan, we are going to need scissors, a needle to hide the tails, five or six buttons, depending on the size that you're going to make. I will be making a size uh, one and a half to two years old. So I think five buttons will be enough for me, but I have six just in case. Make sure your buttons are not too small. Uh, my buttons are approximately two centimeters in diameter. You can uh, take bigger ones than that, but uh, the smaller ones will be too small for the buttonholes. So something approximately two, two and a half centimeters in diameter uh, will be perfect. And one more thing, when you're choosing your buttons, um, choose some that are light in weight. So I have these, these are wooden, they are very, very light. Um, just because the pattern itself is going to be soft, so the cardigan is going to be very soft, it's not going to have a lot of uh, thickness to it or hardness. So if you are going to put uh, heavy buttons on, like I have uh, the metal buttons on the other one, it just um, it doesn't stay in place, uh, meaning uh, it kind of uh, pulls down the cardigan because the buttons are so heavy. So anything light in weight, uh, approximately two, two and a half centimeters in diameter will be absolutely fine. The, and take the color of your choice. I have this really, really dark brown. Uh, so buttons, 
Then stitch markers, take as many as you have. I only have seven with me. I might have to use them uh, the same uh, twice when I have to do some uh, increasing around the uh, neckline or uh, getting ready for the collar. I will explain everything. Uh, we might need up to 15 of them, but like I said, we can use them twice if we really uh, need to. Uh, then a measuring tape, very, very important. We will be measuring to get those uh, sizes right. A hook, I have a four millimeter hook, which uh, matches the weight of my yarn, which is lightweight number three yarn or DK double knit. I have different uh, brands of yarn, but they are all the same weight, all number three lightweight yarns. You can see the brands are different. This is Aldi yarn, this is Deals. Uh, so um, my European v uh, viewers would know where they come from. Uh, then I have ice yarns, but you can use really any brands that you like, the colors that you want, as long as they are the same weight or thickness. So if you just feel they are exactly the same. Uh, one more thing that I wanted to say, uh, grab yourself a piece of paper, um, we might have to take a few notes down. Okay, so let's talk about yarn. Uh, so, I have this light gray for the main uh, color. The cardigan itself is going to be in this light gray color. And we are going to need approximately 150 to 200 grams of yarn. Okay, so uh, obviously the bigger the cardigan, the more yarn you're going to need. The size that I made in four to five years, I have used up uh, approximately 160, 170 grams. So uh, two skeins of 100 grams will be definitely enough for any of the sizes. So this is the main color. And then we are going to need approximately, well, actually three colors for the buffalo plate pattern. Okay, so you can choose different colors if you want. I have the one with the bright pink and light pink, but this time I will do the classic colors, the black, the dark red or kind of brownish. What color does it say? I think it's burgundy. Uh, yeah, burgundy. And I have this really, really bright red. So you're going to need approximately 50 grams of each, perhaps a little bit less. And again, choose whatever colors you want. Uh, I usually choose one uh, that is really, really dark. So I have black for that. One that is light or very, very um, bright. So this is bright for me. And then something one in between to get that really classic look. So whatever you choose, grab your main color and we're gonna get started on this cardigan. Okay, so at this point you're going to need your hook, four stitch markers, measuring tape, and yarn. Now we're going to talk about this, okay? This looks uh, really quite difficult, but it really is not. So let's first have a look right here. Okay, so these are the ages. So one to two, two to three years, three to four, four to five, and five to six years is the biggest size that I have, okay? So uh, the other side is how long our starting chain should be. Okay, so as I will be making one and a half to two years, so this is uh, this falls into this category one to two years, my starting chain should be approximately 36 centimeters in length or a little bit shorter. You don't want to go uh, longer than the measurement right here. Then let's have a look here. So we will be chaining and measuring the length of the chain and we will see which one of these numbers will get the closest to the length that we need. So I will be looking for 36 centimeters. And then you have the plus seven, plus five, plus seven, and plus five. Well, these are the extra chains that we have to add for the front to overlap the other side. So uh, because the cardigan is going to be like this. And as we're measuring around the neck, the neckline, we cannot uh, measure the very, very full length because the chains that we're gonna have or the stitches that we're gonna have overlapping have nothing to do with this length so we're gonna first of all we're gonna have this number right here so we're gonna chain this and if this number let's say 52 60 68 or 76 is our length then we're gonna add the overlapping uh, chains 
hopefully that makes sense. Uh, I'm gonna show it all in action now. Okay, so 36 centimeters and I'm gonna start with chaining 52. Make yourself a slip knot and start chaining. So 52 chains. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 and I will keep going until I have 52 chains. I have got 52 chains so that number right here before okay and now I'm gonna measure if that measures the 36 centimeters in length that I need or a little bit shorter so place your first chain at the beginning of your measuring tape and give it a tiny little pull as you can see this is actually going to work perfectly for me because if I give it a tiny little pull I am at the 35 centimeters in length I need 36 in total but it's going to have a little bit of stretching uh, but because if I go for the bigger number for the 60 I will be over my 36 centimeters which I don't need so rather have it a little bit shorter than too long so here I am uh, I already uh, know that this is the square that I will be working with. If this is too short, if you have to, don't pull it too hard because I, you can stretch it to 39 or whatever now. Just a tiny little bit, just to stretch it out like this. If this is too short for you, you're going to chain 60 and measure the exact same way. You know, it's going to be a little bit longer. If that is still too short, go for... 68 chains and so on until you find that number that is really the closest to what you need or a little bit under that okay so oops so as I have my number of chains here 52 okay so we're gonna add that plus right now so I have plus 7 next to my number you might have plus 5 plus 7 or plus 5 so 52 plus 7 I'm gonna add 7 chains 1 2 3 4 5 6 and 7 chains okay so I have 59 right now in total you would have 65 in total here would be uh, 75 and here would be 81 in total then we're gonna start our very first row to start the very very first row we need to add one more extra chain that is the same for everybody just one more chain now we're gonna skip the first two chains one and two into the third chain from the hook we are going to make our first double crochet so you're gonna yarn over go into the third chain and make a double crochet now we need to count our double crochets and the, the first ch two chains that we have skipped in the very beginning so these right here these count as one double crochet so I have one two we need to make this number of double crochets to begin so 11 in total you might have 13 if you got more chains than me okay so 11 I have 2 into the next chain this is my 3 next is 4 then it is 5 next chain is 6 next is seven eight nine ten and eleven eleven double crochets including that chain two in the beginning okay so this number right here next is our very first corner into the next chain we're going to make three double crochets. So next chain, one double crochet into that same chain, our second double crochet and our third double crochet. Get your stitch marker 
and mark your stitch number two from the hook. The loop on the hook doesn't count. So this is the first stitch and this is the second. Mark that second stitch. After that we keep going. We make this number of double crochets that is on the side right here. So I have nine. You might have 11, 13 or 15. So you look at your square and I have nine. Starting from the next chain, I start counting. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine double crochets. So after this number, up on the top right here, uh, we have our second corner. And again, into the next chain, we're going to make three double crochets. So one, two, and three. Now we're going to again, we're going to ma mark stitch number two from the hook. So this is the first stitch. This is the second. Put your stitch marker into that stitch. After that, we're going to look up the number at the very, very top. So I have 15, 17, 19 or 21, depending on which square you had. So we make this number of double crochets starting from the next chain. Start counting. So one, two, three, and I will keep going until I have 15 double crochets. Okay, so made this, then it is our third corner. Into the next chain, you make three double crochets. One, two, and three. Grab your stitch marker and mark stitch number two from the hook. One, two stitch marker in there. Okay, next is again the other side. So this is going to be the sleeves. It has the same numbers on both sides. So again, I have nine double crochets. Starting from the next chain, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine double crochets. We have our very last and fourth corner into the next chain. Again, three double crochets. One, two, and three. Mark stitch number two. One and two. And to finish now, if I have counted everything everywhere correctly, I should have 11 double crochets left. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and my very last chain, eleven. So have a good look. We are not going to need this anymore because we have finished the very first row. Uh, I'm going to have a, a photo of this on my Facebook page if you need to have a better look. The only thing right now is <clears throat> um, you either have to remember which numbers you had. So uh, I, will, I will just uh, get my notebook and it will be easier for me in the future. I'm just going to write down that I started with 52 
plus 7. Okay? So we're going to need that for our color. Just write it down so you have it so um, you don't have to try and remember or count the very first row. So that is it for now. I'm going to put this away. And we are going to start on row number 2. So this is row number 1. Okay, so row number two is uh, different. We are going to make half double crochets with chains in between them. The only thing is that the uh, row number two is uh, where we make our first buttonhole, okay? And it is going to be on this side. So to start, you are going to chain one and turn. Now we're going to make a half double crochet back into that very, very first stitch. So that is one half double crochet. Then you're going to make a half double crochet into your second stitch. Then you're going to chain two, one and two. You're going to skip two stitches, one, two. Into the third stitch, you're going to make a half double crochet. Now, if you can, please remember how you make your buttonholes because you're going to. Uh, um, have to make them all the way through the cardigan and this is how the row with buttonholes start okay and this is our buttonhole right here so after you make that half double crochet we're gonna go for the pattern and we chain one we skip one stitch we make a half double crochet chain one skip a stitch half double crochet chain one skip a stitch half double crochet chain one skip a stitch and as you can see I have my stitch marker in the next stitch and you should have a stitch before uh, the stitch marker to skip take the stitch marker out and into the stitch where we had the stitch marker we make three ha half double crochets so one half double crochet second half double crochet and third half double crochet and again we are going to mark stitch number two again loop doesn't count first stitch second stitch from the hook stitch marker in there once you make the corners with half double crochets you're gonna start the next part which is going to be the sleeves with chain one skip a stitch and half double crochet in the next one. Chain one, skip a stitch, half double crochet. Chain one, skip, half double. Chain, skip, half double. And then again, I get to skip a stitch right here and I go straight into the stitch that is marked and make three half double crochets one two and three mark stitch number two again after the corner you start with chain one skip a stitch half double crochet and you keep going like this to the end of uh, this row so I might just show you one more corner just in case chain one skip a stitch and into the stitch where the marker is three half double crochets one two and three stitch marker out mark stitch number two stitch number one and two from the hook and after the corner chain one skip a stitch half double crochet so keep going uh, making this until you have three stitches left at the end of this row. I am at the very end of this row. I have made a half double crochet and I have chained one. 
And now if you look closely, so I get to skip one stitch and then I have one, two stitches left and the chain two in the very beginning that we have uh, uh, counted as a stitch. So we need to crochet into that. So to finish this row, and this is just the finish for the rows where we are going to have buttonholes. Okay, the last three stitches are going to be half double crochet. So you're going to skip a stitch, one half double crochet, then second half double crochet, and third half double crochet in the top of the chain two. Now I'm going to tell you um, why we have to have the three last half double crochets without the holes in there okay because when we're going to be sewing the buttons in the overlap right here so this is a buttonhole you won't be able to sew on a button into a hole okay so that's why we leave the last three stitches full one two three so we can sew on a button right there Okay, so we have actually have a place where to sew it and it's not like a hole because you cannot attach a button to that. So last three are half double crochets. Okay, so the next row is row number three and it is a double crochet row again. So watch closely how it starts and how it ends because all other double crochet rows are going to be exactly the same. So you want to chain one and turn. Make a double crochet into that very very first stitch make a double crochet into the next stitch and into the next one. Now the thing is with this row is that we are going to make double crochets into the chains rather than under the chains. Then our uh, rows are going to be nice and neat instead of looking more like a granny stitch. So you're gonna have to look careful. So I have a chain right here. I'm gonna go into the chain, not under it, but into the chain and make a double crochet. And then if you look closely, you can see there there is a hole and there are actually two stitches above it. So one and two. So you're gonna make one double crochet into each of those stitches. This really becomes easy once you know what you're looking at. Again, so this is a hole and there's one stitch and the chain. So just make one double crochet into each of them. And there. And this is uh, how you keep going until you get to the stitch marker. I have one more stitch left before the stitch marker. Just make a double crochet. You see, this is how it looks like. Then stitch marker out and make three double crochets in there. One, two, and three. Mark stitch number two from the hook. One and two. And then you keep going again, you, you keep making uh, one double crochet into each stitch. You can see the very first stitch is right here after you make the corner. So double crochet, double crochet, and you keep going until you get to your next stitch marker. Again, my stitch marker is in the next stitch, take it out and three double crochets into the marked stitch. One, two 
and three. Mark stitch number two from the hook. One and two. And just like that, keep going until you come to the end of this row. So one double crochet everywhere uh, except for the marked stitches. You put three double crochets into each of them and I will see you at the end of this row. So we're finishing row number three and I got to the place where my buttonhole is and I just keep going into every stitch and every chain I just make a double crochet so you can see there's a chain right here I'm gonna go into the chain and there's another one after double crochet double crochet and we finish our very last stitch is a double crochet so this row is really really uh, straightforward you just make double crochets okay so the next row is again the hollow row with half double crochets and chain one it just starts slightly different because we don't need a buttonhole in the next row so this was with a buttonhole and now all the rows in between buttonhole rows will be like this one right here so we're gonna chain one and turn make a half double crochet back into that very first stitch and chain one skip a stitch half double crochet so very simple we'll make a half double crochet chain one and we skip a stitch and we just keep going And again, before the stitch marker, you should end up skipping one stitch where the stitch marker is. Into that stitch, you make three half double crochets. One, two, and three. Mark stitch number two. One and two. Chain one skip a stitch and keep going so the rest is the same the only difference is just the beginning of this row and the end so for now finish this row I will see you at the very end okay so I'm getting closer to finishing this row there is really nothing special about finishing this we just keep doing the half double crochet chain one to the very very end and you should end up with a half double crochet in the very very last stitch in the row with the buttonholes we finish with three half double crochets in in a row where the rows with no buttonholes you just keep going with a pattern and finish like that so remember this row, if you need, you can come back and look at it because it will be exactly the same throughout our yoke and the same with double crochet rows. I'm just going to remind you how the double crochet row starts. So we're going to chain one and turn double crochet back into that very first stitch. It might look a little funny, like a long stitch. Just make a double crochet there and then into the next stitch double crochet and so on one double crochet into each stitch and the corners are exactly the same throughout our yoke as well the marked stitches get three double crochets or three half double crochets depending on what row that you are doing so keep going now I want to talk uh, for a second here about the buttonhole rows okay so we have a buttonhole row right here at the very top let me just show you we are going to have buttonhole rows in every one two three four five and every sixth row so you're gonna have five rows in between the buttonholes so you can see double crochet half double double half double and double five rows 
or the way I find it easier to look is that I have three double crochet rows and I know that the next one needs a buttonhole okay so I will come back once more to show how to do the buttonholes just in case it was a little difficult to see on the first one so for now just keep going uh, and uh, I will see you at the buttonhole so I have one two rows I need three four and five row number six we make another buttonhole okay and so just a reminder how to do your buttonholes and not to forget uh, to do them okay so this is the first buttonhole then you have one two three four five rows down row number six you're gonna have another buttonhole again so to do the buttonholes you are going to chain one and turn half double crochet into the very first stitch half double crochet into the next stitch chain two skip two stitches half double crochet and after that you keep going by the pattern chain one skip a stitch half double crochet and then just to remember that at the very very end of this row so you do the corners and everything the very last three stitches so one two and three are going to be three double uh, half double crochets okay half double half double and half double double just to give it that full space in the front to actually sew the button on okay so I just wanted to remind you that uh, and I will keep reminding you about the buttonholes because it is really easy to forget uh, to do them and we do need buttonholes to button this cardigan up so once in a while I will be just mentioning it to you okay so for now we just need to keep going with the pattern okay until we reach the length of the yoke where we can uh, connect now I will quickly do my yoke then I will uh, pull out my size chart and I will show you everything that you need to measure uh, to get the sizing correct okay for now you just keep going making those two rows and don't forget your buttonholes okay I'm gonna see you in a couple of minutes and so my yoke is done I am ready to measure and to connect it now I'm gonna show you everything okay so again uh, this chart will be on my Facebook page if somebody uh, wants to see it up closer so these are the ages up here and these are the measurements that we need so the first one uh, that we're going to look up now is the yoke right here so for one and a half to two years the size that I'm uh, crocheting for is 14 centimeters in length okay so you look up the size that you are making you know the bigger the size the longer it has to be so 14 for me so that measurement is right here from the top to the stitch marker okay and we want to be a little bit short to that measurement approximately um, one centimeter short a half of a centimeter short a little bit shorter than what is written right here because I'm gonna sh tell you why because this line is going to extend once we do the next row so it will be another extra centimeter once we connect it now it doesn't matter what row you have finished on we will just keep going with the pattern changing up those two uh, rows so don't worry about that and when you measure you want to measure from the top to the bottom like this so from the top corner to where the stitch marker is and if you can see right here so mine is approximately 13 and a half centimeters long right now I need 14 in full but I'm uh, half of a centimeter short I do not worry about that the next uh, it can be longer no problem just make sure it is not too short for you because it will not be comfortable underneath the armhole okay so you want to be a little bit short centimeter or so short to the full measurement okay so once you have that uh, measured and it is good for you uh, the next thing is we are going to measure the back of the cardigan so this part right here from stitch marker to stitch marker we need to um, 
measure out how much we're missing from the circumference around the chest so we can uh, add the chains underneath each armhole to increase that circumference now as a minimum you have to do one chain underneath each armhole because we're going to need that for the sleeves minimum of one uh, but we might need four uh, ex excuse me we not, uh, might need more okay so this right here let's have a look so we have the chest measurement okay so you look up the first big number is a full circumference all around the cardigan now as we're only measuring a half of it we only need a half so either divide that or I have the little numbers written down uh, behind it this the, the smaller number okay so this is just a half of the circumference so 29 centimeters for me I'm gonna measure out so I'm not gonna pull on it I'm just gonna lay it flat and I'm going to measure from one stitch marker like this to another and I'm at 25 centimeters so this is this another stitch marker now I need this to be at 29 so I am four centimeters short that means I need to make chains of four centimeters in length underneath one armhole and the other okay so how to figure out how many chains you need you're gonna pick up uh, the row with the double crochets and you're gonna put your uh, measuring tape at uh, one of the where the uh, double crochet starts okay and then you're gonna count how many double crochets fit into that missing length okay so I need to see how many double crochets fit into that four centimeters so this is four so one two three four five six okay so six stitches fit into four centimeters now there's a little problem for me okay because it has to be an odd number of chains okay so I cannot do six I need to do five or seven whichever way you want to go you want to go onto the bigger side or the smaller side it's completely up to you it just has to be an odd number now as this is a uh, oh <laughs> the, the front covers like this on top of each other I'm actually going to go for the smaller I'm gonna go for five chains because there will be a little bit from that overlap in length left okay so I'm gonna go for the five chains instead of seven but you can go either way whichever way you think but I'm gonna go for five so one three five or seven chains will be absolutely fine it just needs to be an odd number okay and make sure uh, that uh, you are not missing any buttonholes I need another two rows b before uh, I do another buttonhole okay so you're gonna start the row as usual whatever row you're on I am doing the half double crochet row and the chains so I'm just gonna do the usual pattern until I get to the first stitch marker If you're doing double crochets, just do double crochets and your last double crochet will be where the stitch marker is. It is the same for the half double crochet, so you should be able to skip a stitch and make a half double crochet into that stitch with a marker. Now next thing that you are going to do is you're going to chain the chains that you have counted. So I'm going to do five chains. So one, two, three, four and five. I'm gonna get the next stitch marker. This is going to be the armhole or the sleeve and I'm gonna do a half double crochet. If you are on double crochet row you should do a double crochet into that stitch. Okay? You just follow the pattern that you need to follow. After the connection right here you keep going with your usual what you would be normally doing so I'm just gonna 
keep going with half double crochet and chain one until I get to the next stitch marker. And it is the same on the other side. I get to do a half double crochet where the stitch marker is. Then I'm gonna chain five again. One, two, three, four, and five. I'm gonna find my next stitch marker and connect with a half double crochet. And chain one, and I will be finishing the row. Now, from now on, the rows start and finish exactly the same. Don't forget your buttonholes. The only real difference is that we don't have corners anymore. And then we're just gonna make a couple of rows uh, before we start increasing the bottom part. Uh, I just want to show you to show the next row for you so that we know what to do with these chains right here. Okay, so I'm just gonna finish this. Chain one, and I just start my double crochet row as normal, and I'll just make one double crochet until I get to that to those chains underneath the armhole. Okay, so I'm gonna see you right here. Okay, so I'm getting close to those chains right here. So with on the double crochet row, you just take every stitch and every chain and just make one double crochet into each of them, not under, but into each chain. It is very, very simple. Now for the half double crochet and chain one row, it is technically the same. The only thing is that once you get to those chains, you know, you just keep doing that your thing. And then once you get to those chains, you're just gonna chain one, skip a chain, and half double crochet. Chain one, skip, half double crochet. So nothing really much different apart from this uh, from the fact that you have to skip a chain underneath. So nothing difficult uh, and then you get to the end of this row and after that your pattern will be the same. You just keep swapping those two rows around. Okay now um, I think that is very easy to do. For the next four or three rows nothing changes. Now I'm gonna explain you why. Okay so if you are doing your double crochets here now just like me underneath the chains this is a double crochet row then you want to have four rows underneath your armhole before we start to do our uh, increases. So this is one then gonna be half double crochet row two then double crochet row three and half double crochet row Four, and then you stop, wait for me, and we will do the increasing together. Now, for those who have the half double crochet chain one space right here, so if you have a different row from me, you're gonna finish the row with half double crochets. You're gonna have a double crochet row underneath, and then a half double crochet chain one space um, again. So then you, you are only going to have three rows, where I'm going to have four rows underneath the armhole. We just need to be on the same row when we do the uh, increasing and I'm meaning the same row as in double crochet row. So just for you it's going to be different be be because um, I am ahead with one row. So one, two, three, four or one, two, three rows and I'm going to meet you. We will do the increasing together. Okay, so here we are. We have three or four rows from under the armhole. Okay, so you should have a half double crochet chain one space row right now. Okay, so the next row is we are going to do uh, quite a good bit of increasing. We will do an increase in every fourth stitch. So we should be on double crochet row. So again, it starts the same chain one. I have the chain one ready and put a double crochet into the next into the very first stitch that's one double crochet into the next stitch one double crochet that is two into the next stitch three and when you come to number four you're going to put two double crochets in so into that stitch two double crochets 
one and one more into that same stitch then again one double crochet into the next stitch one that is two two in a row then three and stitch number four gets two double crochets <clears throat> one and second double crochet into that same stitch and again one into the next stitch two into the next stitch three and stitch number four gets two double crochets one and one more so two and just like that keep going until you get to the end of this row so two three and stitch number four gets two double crochets and again one two three and number four gets two double crochets one and the second double crochet into that same stitch and keep going just like that to the end of the row and I'm gonna see you right here okay so I'm coming to an end and this is my last increase okay so I have after this I have one two three stitches left now you don't want to do your last increase at the very very end right here if it works out for you that you have to do an increase here just leave it just don't do that so that edge doesn't um, come out a little too much to the side okay so just leave it wherever your one before was uh, it doesn't matter we will fix the number of stitches if we need to in the next row okay and so here we are we did increases now the next row is uh, very very simple just like always half double crochet chain one skip a stitch and keep going make sure uh, just have a look perhaps you need to make a buttonhole here I have I have to finish this row and finish this row and the next one and then I'm gonna have my which one will be that so I have one two three that will be my fourth buttonhole okay so keep going with this row I'll see you at the end and we will see if we need to fix our stitch count right here okay so I'm finishing this row and let's see so I have a half double crochet chain one I'm gonna skip a stitch I have a half double crochet here and this is it so I have uh, one stitch left okay so if I do a half double crochet here I'm gonna have an even number of stitches and my pattern with half double crochets and chain ones are not going to work uh, like all other rows okay so I'm missing one stitch so what I'm going to do I'm gonna add a chain one and as I have nothing to skip right here I'm just gonna put a half double crochet into the very last stitch now for some of you it might uh, work out perfectly that you have a half double crochet chain one skip a stitch and half double crochet at the very end I just want to keep my stitch count um, as it should be so I just added a, uh, a chain one in between the last two stitches although they are without skipping a stitch in between but now I have an odd number of stitches okay so that's an easy fix just add a chain in between the two last ones and you won't be able to see any of that because that will be underneath our um, the front overlapping okay so from now on in every double crochet row pretty much to the very bottom we are going to make four increases in every double crochet row okay so I'm on double crochet row now and what I'm going to do uh, I'm not gonna do any counting or anything this is just going to be a completely uh, visual thing you can grab uh, stitch markers if you want now my stitch markers gone 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 
found them. Okay, so I'm just going to take two for example to show you. Okay, so if you want, you just look at each armhole. So this is the first armhole. And what you want to do, you want to do one increase before the armhole. So let's say, so this is the armhole just a little bit before. So let's say approximately right here. So just in front and one just behind. So approximately here. It doesn't have to be exact. We're just going to do two double crochets in that stitch and two double crochets in that one. And exactly the same on the other side. Uh, so there's the armhole. One a little to the right of the armhole. So approximately here. And one more approximately to the left. So, and this is what I'm going to do in every double crochet row until I get to the bottom, okay? Until the point where we have to count our stitches to do the buffalo plaid um, uh, pattern. So, very simple. Chain one and double crochets. So one double crochet into each stitch until you get to your stitch marker or uh, I will actually do it uh, visually. I will not be marking stitches anymore because it is not that important. The only really important thing is that you actually have an increase on the front right here to the side of the front <clears throat> and then two. So this is the back. So you have two of the increases that actually increase the back and one more that actually increases the front again. So they are not all in one space or all at the back or all at the front. So they are spaced out. So this increases the front, this increases the back, increases the back and this one increases the front. Okay, so get yourself to that first stitch marker to the first place where you're going to do your increase. Okay, so I have the stitch marker there. I'm just gonna put two double crochets into that stitch, one and two, and then I just continue on with one double crochet until the next stitch marker or until the next uh, space. And stitch marker here, pull that out, two double crochets in that stitch, one and two, and so on, one double crochet until the next stitch marker. And that's all there is to it. Now let me just oh, grab one of my cardigans. Okay, so for those who didn't quite understand, okay, so this is the row where I have made many increases. This is where it really expands. And then every time in a double crochet row, so all of these are gonna have four increases. So if this is the armhole, I will just uh, uh, mark one, two stitches on one side and two on the other side under the, in each, uh, under the, uh, the other armhole. And then again and again and again, we're just gonna leave the very last double crochet row right here where we're going to have to uh, to get our uh, stitch count ready for the buffalo plaid um, pattern for the bottom right here. So um, first of all, I'm going to quickly go away and I'm going to crochet all this and then I'm going to come back and I'm just going to talk uh, with you about the full length of the cardigan just because it's easier when you actually have something to show. Um, to measure uh, visually it is much easier uh, than just talking about it so uh, I will finish all this and then we will talk about the length of the cardigan okay and so I have almost 
full length in the uh, main pattern made i have finished on the row with half double crochets in chain one i'm gonna have one extra row but before i'm gonna have to do a little bit of counting now talking about the length okay so uh, i am making my one i want the pattern in this main color to be the same length as my sleeves are going to be so if i look up right here on my chart so sleeve length to the edge that I'm making is 21 centimeters. So I want my main pattern to end at approximately 21 centimeters as well. It can be a little bit shorter, a little bit longer, it does not matter, uh, but approximately there. So uh, if I measure this, just need to find my measuring tape. Okay, so 21 centimeters is the length that I'm gonna have my sleeves at so i'm at approximately 19 and a half centimeters now and i'm gonna have one more row of double crochets at the very end so i will be approximately at 21 like i said it doesn't matter if it's a little bit uh longer or shorter in the main pattern completely up to you we just kind of want to finish it at the length of the sleeve just so our cardigan would not be um too long and then after that we're gonna have three rows of squares so it's actually six rows uh, and that will add approximately nine centimeters in length after that now if you are making like bigger sizes or you just want more squares at the bottom what i would um, recommend to do is that you would add like two rows do five rows of squares then okay so i have three you can do five but then you want to finish this main pattern approximately five centimeters let me see approximately five six centimeters shorter than the sleeve so you would start your squares higher up okay so the sleeve would still be longer than your squares just uh, if you will want to make five uh, rows of squares from the place where your sleeves are going to end it's going to be quite long okay so you should rather than move them a little bit higher up everything is exactly the same you will just start it higher up and you can do five rows we're going to have more buffalo plate pattern at the bottom okay so i'm going to have only three rows of squares so i'm starting a little bit lower if you want five you can start approximately five centimeters shorter uh, than the sleeve so then you just look up the length of the sleeve let's say i'm looking at mine 21 i would finish this at approximately 16 centimeters so i would have finished it right here okay and then start my squares okay like i said completely up to you whatever you want to do if you want more squares start them earlier now uh, it is nice and wide but the next thing we need to do is we need to get ready for those squares and that is where our last row of double crochets comes in if you have your notes grab them we just need to do a little bit of counting now so the easiest way i find to count my stitches at this point is in the row with half double crochets and chains i want to count how many <clears throat> Uh, spaces I have the chain one spaces okay and then I'm gonna show you how to uh, add everything up to know how many uh, stitches you have if you find this difficult you can just uh, um, uh, count every half double crochet and every half uh, chain one space so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten and so on you can count all the way to the end so you know uh, how many uh, in total you have I find it easier to count just the chain one spaces. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 30. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 40. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 50. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 60, 61, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 
70. I have 71 chain one spaces. I'm going to take that number. So 71 times 2. I end up with 142 and plus one stitch at the end. So I, I have a total of 143 stitches at the moment. Like I said, if that is hard, so the number of chain one spaces, you multiply by two. Whatever you get, you add one stitch. Okay, so that's the multiples of two plus one. Or just count your stitches each uh, each individually. Okay, so once we know how many stitches uh, we have, we have to decide how many increases we need to do. Now, the multiples for, for the um, squares is multi multiples of 10 and plus 5 at the end. Now, that will not be very clear to everyone, okay? So, uh, I will tell you the easiest way to find how many stitches you need to have. So, the number of stitches we need to have is with a 5 at the end. Meaning, I'm going to start with, let's say, 85 stitches, 95, 105, 115, 125, 135, 145, 155, 165 and so on. It has to have a 5 at the end. Now, I'm going to stop at 255, so any number of these stitches will work with the uh, pattern for the buffalo plate, okay? Now, I have 143 stitches. So the closest one to me is 145. That will work. But I want to do a little bit more increasing uh, because once we start doing those uh, squares, let me show you. So once we start doing those squares, there will be no increasing in the squares. And the way you're skirt is now widening up a little bit at this point where you do the squares it's not going to widen anymore okay it's going to go straight down so to give it a tiny little um widening at the squares it's just going to be one time to increase i i'm going to going to go for the bigger number i'm going to go for 155 Okay, so I'm going to do a lot of, uh, a bit more increasing in the last row, and then my squares, my buffalo plate pattern will be approximately like this, okay? Instead of being straight down, it's going to have a little bit of widening. So that means if I want a 155 stitches for the buffalo plate squares there, I need to know how many increases I have to do. I have 143 stitches. 143 okay 155 minus 143 and I end up with 12 which means I need to make 12 increases okay does that make sense I could go for 145 and just make free increases just a little bit just to get that uh, stitched count correct but I want it to widen up a little bit so I'm gonna go for 155 stitches okay so 10 more so that means I need 12 increases now if you find this difficult okay you can write me in the comments how many stitches you have and I will try to help you out to explain how many you need to do if that doesn't make sense for you okay Hopefully, hopefully it actually makes sense. Okay, so 12 increases. So the next row that I'm going to make, whatever number you have, you just have to split them pretty much evenly, okay? So I'm just going to look at, so this is a half of my cardigan. And as I have 12 increases, I'm just going to do 6 on one side. Just 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And then the same on the other side. One, two, three, four, five, and six. I'm just gonna 
uh, lay them out pretty much evenly I'm no counting just proper visual okay just make sure that you put a half on one side whatever number you have uh, to add and another half right here you can mark with, uh, with the stitch markers where you want to do the increases I'm just gonna do a completely visual thing just just gonna mark out approximately a half of the cardigan so I know that I have to have six before and six after okay and then it is chain one turn and start making your double crochets and approximately here somewhere I'm gonna do my first increase so two double crochets one and two so that's my first increase out of 12 then I'll keep going for a little bit making one double crochet Then I'm gonna do another one into the next stitch. I'm gonna do two double crochets. This is my second increase out of 12. Then again, a little bit further on. Let me see where I'm at. I can do another few. I'll do my third increase. So two double crochets, one and two. This is my third increase. And I will keep going until I make my 12 increases. Now you might have a different number, so you have to make sure that you do your number of increases okay so I have three I still need to do one two three on this side and then six on the other half of the cardigan now do that and I will see you at the end of this row and so I have finished 12 increases and I ended up with a hundred and fifty five stitches now I don't need that for now at the end of the row you're gonna chain one and cut your yarn this is all I have left from my first skein so I'm just gonna cut it off and finished now we're going to start with our buffalo plate pattern so what you want to do is you want to start from the side with no buttonholes okay so at this point right here so I have finished my row on the other side and I'm gonna start my squares right here so this is where we finish this row we start on the other side so grab the two colors uh, that you want uh, to be in the first row of um, buffalo plaid so I start with the two dark colors with black and burgundy so like this you can choose whatever you want to start with okay so my first one is black and we are gonna have each square is gonna be made uh, of uh, five double crochets start with black make a slip knot connect into that very very first stitch I'm gonna chain one make first double crochet into that very first stitch so one double crochet one into the next stitch that is two into the next stitch three into the next stitch four and then it's the last one now you want to make the last one halfway through and stop okay it's a little bit hard to see uh, with the black but you uh, stop when you have two loops left on your fifth double crochet you're gonna drop that color pick up the other color that you're going to use I have burgundy 
Okay, I'm not gonna do any slip knots or anything. I'm just gonna leave the tail hanging. I'm gonna uh, make a knot after that. Now, I'm just gonna finish that stitch number five with burgundy color. I just pulled it through. Now you want to drop those tails, leave them on the inside, and what you want to do is you want to crochet over the thread from that first color. Okay, so I have the black one. I'm gonna put it on top of my that very last row. I'm gonna crochet on top of that. And then I'm gonna yarn over and start my five uh, double crochets in burgundy color. So one, two, three, four, and again number fifth, double crochet number fifth. I just crochet halfway through and I'm gonna stop. Now you have that uh, tail from your first color underneath. Okay, so you crochet over it. So I'm just gonna pull it a little bit just to make it nice and tight. I'm gonna drop the burgundy color, pick up the black, and finish that last double crochet with the black color, like this. I'm gonna pull tight, and again, I'm, I will be crocheting on top of the burgundy, okay? So it's going like this. And again, five double crochets in black for me. So this is one, two, three, four, and I start number five. I go pull through two loops and stop, leave the two loops on the hook. I'm going to give it a little pull on that burgundy tail to make them nice and tight. Drop the black and pick up the burgundy. and finish that last two loops with a new color. Again, tail from the, or the thread from the previous color on top and five in burgundy for me. One, two, three, four, and number five halfway through. I'm gonna pull a little on the tail <coughs> Swap the two threads around, finish with the other color, and so on. One, two, three, four, number five, halfway through. Pull on the tail from the other color to make it nice and tight or snug. Swap the two colors around, finish with a new color. And this is all there is to changing those two colors around. I'm gonna pull a little, swap them, and finish it off. So this is all I'm going to do on the first row. Now make sure. Uh, so once in a while I'm gonna just uh, uh, swap those colors around just to untie that little uh, kind of um, they tie around each other if you keep changing colors the same side side uh, the same way. So I'm just gonna work them out so they are nice and untied and I will keep going. So I'm gonna see you at the end right here. Okay, so I'm at the very end. I am finishing now my second last square, which is burgundy. Your very last square should be the same color that you have started, so black, okay? So at the second last square, what you want to do now, once you have to change colors, Instead of crocheting over that color, you're just going to completely drop it on the inside of the cardigan. So this is the good side, the face side, and the other side is the inside. So you just completely drop that and finish your square in the color just with one thread. Okay, so you should have five stitches left at this point. 
one, two, three, four, and five. So this is what you should have. So this is the other side, okay? So I wanted the same color to start and the same color to finish. Okay, so now we need to finish uh, the first row of squares, which means we need to make another row of double crochets on top in the same color, okay? So uh, black will have black on top, burgundy will have burgundy, and so on again. Five double crochets uh, for each color. Now to start that row, you are going to chain one and turn. At this point, you are on the inside of the cardigan. So now, make a double crochet back into that very first stitch. I'm sorry for the black, it's not very easy to see. Just find the first stitch and make one double crochet into the next is two, three, four, and fifth, halfway through, drop that color and pick up your secondary color. Okay, so I have my burgundy. I'm gonna pull a little tight there so it doesn't leave a hole. I'm just gonna bring it up like this and finish up that black with burgundy. Okay, so this is what we should have right now. Now I'm gonna start my burgundy. Now what I want to do is I'm gonna go under that burgundy thread that I have picked up to go up uh, uh, to the next row right here because it's uh, very long, it doesn't look very nice, so I'm just gonna go under it and into the very first stitch in that color and make a double crochet. Now again, you will be bringing those colors on top, okay? So I'm bringing the black on top of the burgundy. So I have one, two, three, four, number five halfway through, drop, I'm dropping burgundy, picking up black and finishing with black and so on. So it's exactly the same, just in this row, you're just finishing those squares in the same colors. Again, I'm just going to give it a little pull just to tighten them up, swap the two colors around, finish with burgundy and keep going. Swap around, give it a little pull, and finish. And you can see on the other side, we have we already have a full square. So keep going. I'll see you at the end right here. Now I'm finishing uh, the first row of squares, and let's see. So I'm. This is the last. Uh, square in this color. So halfway through I'm just gonna cut off the tail. I'm gonna leave it a little bit longer like this and I'll make sure that it's on the same side where all the tails are. So leave it to you, to that side where every all the tails are. Then I'm just gonna finish with black all the way to the end. One, two, three, four, and five, chain one, and cut off your yarn. Now the next squares are actually exactly the same, it's just that you need to uh, change those colors, okay? So what you're going to do is a, bit, a little bit like checkers, so I'm going to keep my burgundy in the next row, but it's going to go on top of the black, okay? And then there will be no black in the next row. It's going to be bright red on top of burgundy. So just like that. So you see, burgundy is going, will be in each row of squares. Okay? I'm just swapping around the black for red. And it's going on top. 
Does that make sense? I'm sure that you know how um, a buffalo plaid looks like. Now I'm just going to find my uh, bright red. Okay, so to start the next row, you're going to turn like this. And you're going to grab the color that you will start with. So like I said, I will be starting, I will be making burgundy on top of blacks. I'm going to make a slip knot. Go into that very first stitch. I'm going to chain one and start making my double crochets. The rest is exactly the same. You are just using different colors, but the pattern itself or the way you make those um, squares is exactly the same. So halfway through with burgundy and I finish off with a new color with a bright red or rose red. Okay, I'm gonna leave a longer tail. I'm just gonna finish it off. I'm gonna bring the thread and one, two, three, for number five halfway through I'm gonna give it a little pull switch the two colors around finish the number five and five double crochets in the new color two three four five halfway through a little pull swap the two colors around and so on. So we have done the whole uh, thing before. It is exactly the same, like I said, it's just in different colors. So you just need to keep going until you have all the squares you need. So I have one row full squares. I'm gonna do this and then come back in the same colors. That will be my second uh, row of squares and I will do the third one exactly the same. I'll start with a black burgundy, black burgundy and so on. So just because I have uh, three rows of squares. Now if you have five, so it is exactly the same. You just have more squares. So for now, keep going until you have all your squares made and I will see you and we will hide those tails together and we will do the buttons. So we, all of this would be completely finished. Okay, and uh, I am done with my squares at the bottom. As you can see, now all I have to do is uh, hide those tails. So it is quite straightforward. First of all, I have not been making any slip knots or knots at the colors that I was um, connecting on the second square you can see these tails the same color so first of all I'm just going to make a simple knot with those two tails okay I'm not gonna pull too tight so that the top is not pulling downwards so that's one then I have the two bright red ones <clears throat> Again, just a simple knot. And one more at the bottom right here. And I'm just gonna, I have crocheted over those tails a little bit, the ones that I have joined and finished with at the beginning right here. So I'm just gonna Pull them a little bit just to make that edge a little bit neater. So this tail as well. And here we are nice and straight. So now all I have to do is hide them. In between the same color stitches.
just like that I'm gonna hide them all I'm just gonna show you this very last one because it is on the corner so this is how I hide them to make it look nice so I'm gonna go from the bottom into the very very first stitch so it's a little hard to see because it's black but I'm just going straight down now I'm just gonna make sure that it's a nice corner not too tight and then just hide in between stitches and just like that done so hide all those tails and then I'll show you how I sew in one of my buttons Okay, and so my buttons. Um, my buttonholes are not big enough uh, to take thick thread or piece of yarn, so I'm just going to use some thinner one and a smaller needle. I just make a knot at the very end. And just like that. And both threads have a knot. It's one knot, but it catches both threads. Then you find where you're going to be sewing your button. So it's uh, the first, the top button is in row two. So just right here. Place your button from the inside. I'm going to catch one buttonhole go into another one and pull through now at the other end I'm gonna find I'm gonna go in between those two threads because there is a knot at the end I'm just gonna go with the needle right in between them and it catches it's not gonna come out and pull tight and then I'm just going to sew on as usual as a normal button then into the other holes make sure that your button is nice and tight there on the other side I'm gonna make a little knot right now so I'm just gonna go catch a little bit of yarn a little bit there I'm gonna pull but not all the way through once I have a smaller loop left I'm gonna go in to the loop with my needle once and into that same way twice and now I'm gonna pull tight and I have a very nice and strong knot down there and not to cut it too close to the knot, I'm just going to go in and hide it a little bit, just like that. Cut. And here we are. I have a button in. And this is exactly the same I'm going to do with all my buttons. Uh, so when I come back in part two, I will have my buttons in. And all we're going to have left uh, in part two will be the collar uh, and the sleeves. The rest is finished. Oh yes, and perhaps the bow right here if you want one. Okay, so for now I'm going to uh, go away and start getting ready for part two. You probably have another little bit of work left to do. So I will see you then. And all of this will be finished with buttons. And I will see you then. Bye for now.